Hey everyone, it's Graphic back with another video, and today on the PTR, there is Starstone Barrows and Amrine Expedition mashup currently in place. And if you go to the PTR, you're going to be able to run through this dungeon already. This dungeon has a lot of new things that are being introduced to the actual game itself. First off, we're going to see the Biobomb being introduced with the Starstone and Amrine mix-up, or mashup I should say. So you can see here, the Creeping Vial or Crippling Vial inflicts slows on successful hits, reducing target's movement speed by 20% for 3 seconds, and then you can also get that Exhausting Vial, inflicting exhaust on successful hits, reducing target stamina regeneration by 30%. So they're continuing to add more Heart Runes already. I'm sure they've even got more prepared for when the time comes. We also have more weapons and armor to look through as well, some being very, very best in slot weapons and armor coming to the PTR. We'll take a look at those here in just a minute. But before we do so, let's take a look at some more of these Heart Rune capabilities. So next up was the Stalwart Heart Rune of Bile Bomb. This one is the same idea of Crippling Bile. However, Mending Bile, players who hit the afflicted targets are healed for 20% of the damage done, but healing reduction is reduced to 15% and damage over time is removed. So Mending Bile is one of those options when it comes to the Bile Bomb. Next up with the Bile Bomb, we have the Brutal Heart Rune of Bile Bomb. This one is going to be Concentrated Bile. Healing reduction is reduced to 50% and damage increased to 30% per second, but the projectile no longer creates a cloud on impact. So you're going to see a lot of people trying to start integrating Bile Bombs into their PvP and PvE builds. Most likely PvP more than PvE. But there is some cool things here for sure to see. And it comes down to a lot of great best in slot PVE gear that is only really outclassed right now by the sun gear or the sun. Uh, what is it called exactly? I believe it's just called the sun. I have to look this up now because I, I got to make sure I know what it's called. Uh, it's the sun lord set. So the sun lord sets have really, really good ancient ward, shirking fort, and refreshing evasion. It's currently the best in slot ancient gear for light armor users for sure when it comes to dex light users. So sun lord set, like I said, definitely one to look for for ancient. However, Simon Gray has its own set coming. And it's going to be very, very similar in regards to that uh, sun lord's quality. We're going to see actually here one of the boots, the Simon Gray boots. It's going to have the Ancient Ward invigorated and refreshing. So, of course, for damage dealers, most likely, this is not going to be an option as it is focus. And all of these are really focus when it comes to the Simon Gray's shambles, pants, boots, wrist cards, and the, where is that? The helmet as well. So those are all 25 focus, invigorated, refreshing with Ancient Ward, which is great for healers. They're going to get a medium set that comes very, very well uh, kind of brought out to them if you're new to level 60. These are going to be some Prebus Ancient Ward gear for sure. We also have the Staff of the Befouled Temple. This one you can see has Keen Beacon, Refreshing Move, and Blessed, which is, you know, is not bad at all for a Prebus set at all. Um, it depends on exactly what you're looking for on your healer setup, but this staff, not too bad. I do want to say before we get too much farther into this video, because there is going to be some very, like I said, bis weapons and things that we are going to go through. If you haven't already, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications on. And if you guys didn't know, we stream on twitch.tv slash iGraphicEye every Saturday, Monday, and Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern. We got the finalized schedule down. And we are going to be streaming at 6 p.m. Eastern to probably about 2 a.m. Eastern. So make sure to tune in for those streams on, like I said, Monday, Thursday, and Saturday. So let's continue down. We have Burrowed or Borrowed, sorry, Blade. And this one's going to be very interesting. It's going to have Contagious Reverse Stab, Keenly Jagged, and Refreshing Move, which is very, very solid if you are looking for that Reverse Stab perk. This is going to be a strength, uh, you know, obviously, Blade here that a lot of people going Sword and Shield may look for. I want to go into the Tainted Dragon, though. This is going to have the Empowering Shooting Stance, Plagued Crits, and Vorpal. Not a terrible, terrible musket at all if you are looking for those Plagued Crits. Next up, we have Simon Gray Shambles. We already talked about all of the focus gear that they brought out that is Simon Gray. And like I said, I think this is good. We needed to see more focus gear for healers. However, it is medium, so you're going to only be able to select a few pieces if you're going to continue to run light in Ancient Dungeons. Next up, we have the Space Between. If you look at the Space Between, it has Hated, which you generate more threat, not bad for a sword. Light and Heavy Attacks deal more damage, Enchanted, and Keenly and Fortified. All fairly decent when it comes to a sword with tanking capabilities. 
Next up, we have the Crusher's Craze. Crusher's Craze is, you know, not too crazy because we do have Chain Fire there. If you like Chain Fire, that's something you may go for. But Life Stealing, Enchanted, and Chain Fire, not really the Warhammer we're looking for. However, there is one later in this video that I looked at that uh, does have some pretty cool stuff going with it. So, Amrine's Forgotten Axe, definitely a cool name there, taking Amrine under its belt there with the uh, with the naming system. But it has Strength, Refreshing, Keen Berserk, and Keenly Empowered. So it's definitely something you're going to want to take if you are looking to run that Berserk in just kind of the open world PvE. However, realistically, you are going to want Refreshing Torrent or Vicious or Rogue or Backstab with the Rogue or additional damage there. So this is probably a hatchet you're going to skip out on for the most part. We have Lost Faith next up in line. Lost Faith is going to actually have the Blessed Refreshing Divine Embrace and then Mortal Refreshment. So one thing I really like to see here is we are getting a lot of different life staffs for people that are going to give them a lot of different options if they're trying to go, you know, certain unique builds. We have Darkness Defined next in line. This is going to be a 29 strength, light and heavy attack, deal 9.5% more damage. We have Chain Void and Thwarting Strikes. The Thwarting Strikes plus Enchanted is a very, very strong start for the Great Axe. And plus Chain Void's not too bad either. So another potentially a pre bis here. Uh, I know a lot of people looking for specific ability perks on there as well, but this is not too bad. As getting fresh level 60, take this in a heartbeat. I want to look at the next one though, Amrine Excavator's Amulet, Purify, Refreshing, and Health. Health and Refreshing, very solid on an Amulet, but Purify, when you're hit below that 50% health, you lose all debuffs. Probably something I would not really want to take. Uh, it's not bad per se, but it's not a bad Amulet, it's just realistically not a bis we continue farther down we have the caverns lurkers defense this is going to give you dex of course because it is a bow bringing you enchanted verbal and shirking arcane with the shirking arcane you are going to have that additional dodging through an enemy attack causing your next hit within six seconds to deal an additional 38 percent with base weapon damage is arcane but uh, realistically there are better bows out there again like i said that we will continue to hunt for uh, the Cavern Lurker's Defense, though, not too bad. Next up, we have in line the Amulet Jewelry, uh, Keepsake, the Nakamishas or Nakashimas Keepsake. This is going to have Mana Recovery, Health, and Arcane Protection, something that we don't really need right now, Arcane Protection. So, continuing on, Frozen Mire has Unbroken Winds, Enchanted, and Keenly Fortified. Another kind of Ice Gauntlet that really just gets outclassed by so many others. Moving on farther down, we have Simon Gray's Toothpick. Very, very cool here to have the Refreshing Flesh on top of this rapier with keen and keenly empowered definitely not the craziest one out there but not a bad setup item if you are looking or setup weapon if you are looking for that refreshing flesh on a weapon uh for like kind of that weapon perk or kind of that niche build or utility build where you are looking to continue with refreshing fleshes so we have next up in line excavator safety helmet this has critical retribution resilient and physical version this is a pretty solid tanky item uh it is a heavy head but if you're looking for that resilient with physical version and critical retribution this could be very very solid depending on the build you're looking for obviously people usually want some kind of freedom or some kind of resilient or not resilient some kind of freedom or some kind of a shirking fort but uh you know this is not a bad option as kind of a just a random piece to throw in there for ex extra that uh of that uh physical aversion is what i'm trying to say so we move on a little bit farther down. We have more, by the way, a ton more to look at here. There's a lot of new weapons coming in. I think it's about 20 more probably, so let's continue on. We'll try to keep this going at a good pace so you guys can listen and understand that there is BIS items coming from this. It's just a little bit farther down. We'll see some more and uh, some better ones as well. So Tomb Raider's Rifle. This is going to have Keen, Vorpal, and Keenly Empowered with 29 Dexterity. And now we have a spear called Burial Spear. This is going to have the Enchanted Thwarting Counter and the Enfeebling Skewer, which is really, really solid. This is maybe a best in slot depending on what you're looking to go, but I really do like this spear. I think this is going to be a lot of people's favorite as, as Enchanted, and you deal 19% additional damage against targets with Active Grit. So huge, huge to have Enchanted and Thwarting. And then also, like I said, the Skewer, a very solid spear to look for in the Amrine Starstone mix-up. Actually, let's make sure that's dropping from that specifically. So it is from Simon Gray, it looks like, on the Starstone Barrows Mutated Dungeon. So very, very cool. Let's go back, though, and continue on down past the spear. So next up, we have Simon's Hack Silver Ring, which is Slash Damage, Leeching, and Hardy, which basically looks like a best-in-slot for some people here for sure. This is going to be very, very solid. Slash, Leeching, and Hardy. 
probably a best in the slot that a lot of us should be looking for, Simon's Hack Silver Ring. Uh, as we continue down, we have Prosperous Prime, or sorry, Prosperous Promise, and it's going to be a focus amulet, uh, or sorry, earring, with the health, refreshing, and fortified recovery, so not too bad there. Next up, we have Flare Spark with Accelerating Flamethrower, Refreshing Evasion, and Critical Chance Keen, so not too bad yet again. We are starting to see some, you know, pre bis stuff. We saw a couple bis, in my opinion, you know, if we look back at that Simon Tax Silver Ring, that's definitely going to be a potential bis, depending on the build you're running. If we continue on down, though, we have the Staff of the Befouled or Befold Temple, and I think we talked about some of the other life staffs being very, very solid. This is another one, Blessed Keen Beacon and Refreshing Move. If we go down, we see Obsidian Edged Musket. This is going to be a Dex, Refreshing Power Shot, Vorpal, Keenly Jagged, a very, very strong musket for some players to actually start using. Graveguard's Seal, though, is going to have Health, Divine, and Slash Protection. So it's nice if we get some Slash Damage stuff that's best in slot to get some Slash Protection stuff that's maybe not best in slot, but in my opinion, Health, Divine, and if you're going up against a lot of Slash, this could be definitely best in slot for some people. So definitely watch out for this amulet if you are looking for it. Creeping Cold, Life Stealing, Mortal, Empower, and Keen. You're not really going to run Life Stealing and Mortal Empower typically, or sorry, Mortal Power typically if you are running an Ice Gauntlet, but maybe you go for it, maybe it works out for you. Next up, we have the Staff of the Emulated or Emulated Veil. Next up, we have the Staff of the Emulated Veil. This is going to give you Intelligence, Keen, Powering Meteor Shower, and Mortal Power. So when you kill something, gain that 15% in power for 20 seconds. So next up, we have the Staff of the Emulated Veil. This is one of those unique fire staffs that's just never going to get used just because Empowering Meteor Shower is just trash realistically right now and needs a huge overtune or overhaul. Next up, we have Sunderstrike. That's going to have Enchanted Life Stealing and Chain Ice. And then we have Obsidian Rapier, which is going to have Keen, Keen Speed, and Mortal Refreshment. Fanged Ring, which is going to have Nature Damage, Leeching, and and thrust damage. This could be really, really good for certain players looking for that thrust damage depending on your build. If you're looking for that nature damage because you maybe have nature slotted in your your uh, you know rapier or wherever else doing that thrust damage, it's going to be something to look out for for sure. And uh, you know we never know when we might need some nature damage additionally. So Masquerade Mask is next in line. It's going to have intelligence, refreshing freedom, and elemental aversion. Definitely not too bad at all. Like I said, you are missing resilient freedom and shirking fort, but uh, it's not too bad. Like I said, this is one of those masks that you could use as a slot if you are looking for something with just freedom. I know I said it didn't have freedom. I don't know why I said that, but it has refreshing freedom and elemental aversion. So if you need just maybe one piece of freedom and you're missing it because you have resilient and shirking for on everything else, this could be your freedom piece for sure. Next up, we have the Glacial Longsword. Here we can see the Trenchant Crits, Keen, and the Chain Ice. Next up, we have Fleeting Reality. This is going to be a refreshing move, Enchanted and Chain Nature. The Obelisk, though, being one of the best out there when it comes to a Warhammer. Of course, you're not typically going to want the Keen because Keen is critical chance. And realistically, on a Warhammer, the Enchanted plus Sundering Shockwave is great. But uh, something like Chantrant Strikes or something like that would be really, really good here. Or Thwarting Strikes, I should say. Very, very solid here. But uh, Keen is going to make this more of a pre -bis set or a pre -bis Hammer. Next up, we have Ancient Heartstring. This is going to have the Mortal Lifesteal, the Thwarting Counter, and Life Stealing. So very, very solid. And then we have Tip of the Morning Star. So Enfeebling Skewer, Trenchant Rend, and that Keen on top of it. So a lot of great spears coming out with Enfeebling Skewer. So if you like Enfeebling Skewer, this is going to be a patch for you. Now we have the Stone Hoon Ring. This is going to have Hardy, Sacred, and Siphoning. We have Long Winter up next, Shirking Frost, Life Stealing, and Unending Thaw which is not too bad. You know, we are looking for an ending thaw ice gauntlets. However, life stealing is not going to be too great on an ice gauntlet, I wouldn't say. And then shirking frost, something that I'm really not looking for on my weapons at the moment. So we have abyssal reckoning as well. Keenly jagged, refreshing, and refreshing rupture. And then two face going to be that spear at the very bottom with plagued crits, rogue, and keen. So another one that has some pretty good potential there with the spear having rogue and keen as well as that plagued crits perk or ability perk. Uh, let's continue on down, though. We have next up in line, unanswered question, which is the strength from, uh, or really the strength sword that has thwarting counter, keenly fortified, and keen. Hybris, or Hebrus, I would, I would assume this is Hybris. By the way, this is the first great sword we've seen out of all of the great swords 
uh, or sorry, all the legendaries. There's only been this one gray sword, which is crazy to see. This one has Plague Strikes, Refreshing Move, and Trenchant Recovery, though, and it makes sense that there's only one because this thing is unbelievable. Probably a best for a lot of different people, depending on what you're looking for, but like I said, it's it's very, very solid. Plague Strikes is something a lot of people may be running if we continue to see so much life stealing out of every single option or every single build. Hybris is one of those great swords that uh, a lot of people will be hunting for, I believe. So let's move on to Lady of the Ancient. This is going to be Mortal Refreshment, Leeching, Shrapnel Blast, and then Life Stealing. So a ton, a ton of Life Stealing from this specific blunderbuss. Next up, we have Ritual's Call. Ritual's Call is going to have Mortal Fortification, Sundering Shockwave, and then Keenly Empowered as well. Very interesting to see the Warhammer have so many different builds uh, in viability with these drops coming. Signal as well as the bow coming, Mortal Power, Enchanted, and Chain Fire. So very, very strong altogether. Those are all the legendaries I wanted to show you guys today that are coming with Starstone and Amrine mashup. If you guys want to see more every single day here on the channel, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications on, as well as follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash iGraphicEye. I'll say it again, 6 p.m. Eastern to 2 a.m. Eastern on Saturday, Monday, Thursday. Those are the streams coming to you. Make sure to tune in. I'll see you guys all in the next one.